Mark your calendars and get ready for some fun because a beloved LaSalle tradition is back. Hello, I'm Nick Paleo. And I'm Callie Montana. A four day school week is currently in effect and now people are wondering if Colorado made the right choice. We have all this and more coming up on LTV News where the action never stops. And welcome to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Avenue, Philadelphia, and the world. There's a lot to catch up on the next half hour, as Dave Roberts had the chance to sit down with the co-president of her campus, LaSalle, for this week's interview. So let's hear the buzz around campus. The LaSalle community is looking for help in order to get a LaSalle alum, Peter B.R. Ajak, released from prison. Peter was arrested on July 28th in South Sudan while boarding a plane. He is being held without charge because he was advocating for peace and criticized the country's government on Twitter. Peter grew up in South Sudan but was displaced during the war. He ended up living in refugee camps before the humanitarian charities took him to the United States. While there, Peter took advantage of the opportunity and attended LaSalle University, Harvard and Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. During his time in the States, Peter never stopped thinking about South Sudan and always knew that he had to go back in order to help his country. Peter has a wife and two young children and is still being held in South Sudan. After only a few months, the spin bike phenomenon has come to an end. LaSalle announced that spin made a rapid and unexpected departure from campus. Spin has stated that this new part of their plan to focus on electrical scooters rather than bikes. Spin sent out emails to all customers who signed up for their program about reimbursing them for what remained on their account and refunded those who bought passes for the upcoming semester. Vice President of Student Affairs Don Soufflera said, quote, while we are disappointed in SPIN's departure from LaSalle and that shared bikes will not be waiting for students, faculty, and staff on their return to campus, we are committed to bringing in another provider as quickly as possible." Unquote. Souflaris is optimistic that LaSalle will have a new bike sharing company on campus by mid-October. I never used them. I usually walk everywhere I went. But I know some people who did use them and it really like changed their lives. It was a great way for students to um, travel to their classes um, more faster and efficiently. I also think that it was just a fun, safe activity for us students to do on campus. After a one-year hiatus, LaSalle's homecoming is back. Last year, the university decided to forego the annual event in favor of what they called One Big Weekend, which was not well received by alumni. The university has heard the criticism and brought back the more traditional homecoming, which will be held on Saturday, November 10th, and will feature a carnival in the quad and a men's basketball game against Lafayette at 3 p.m. The weekend surrounding homecoming will also play host to Family Weekend, where events for current explorers' families will be held as part of the homecoming celebration. LaSalle's radio station WEXP has just joined the extensive list of national college radio stations on a new app to boost their ratings. Check it out. Good evening, LaSalle Explorers. This is your host, Dan Sardero, back with the first installment of On the Upbeat, uh, your favorite mu uh, music show on uh, WEXP, LaSalle's uh, Sound of the Campus. Meet Dan Sodero, a senior communication major who is doing everything in his power to revamp LaSalle's radio station. So this year we're trying to bring, out, bring back kind of the strength that we've had uh, in, in decades previous um, and bring kids the music, the politics, the sports, everything they love to listen to. WEXP has been around since 1972 and is a student-run radio station that has experienced a few setbacks over the past few years. We don't have a huge base of kids. Um, we probably have like 20, 20 members. WEXP gives all LaSalle students the opportunity to create their own content and learn how to properly put together a radio show. We have a couple shadowing sessions for new kids to kind of come and, and get accustomed to how to get on air, um, feel a little more comfortable with talking on air. And uh, after that, after the couple shadowing sessions, kind of some, some learning processes there, uh, it's easy. Dan knew that in order to get WEXP back on their feet, the station needed to make some changes. Radio FX, uh, it's great. 
great. We put it on our homework last semester and got it up and running this semester. We're very excited to introduce it to the LaSalle student body. And we're very excited to have our name included in the kind of international uh, network of radio, um, of college radio stations. Um, it has a lot of cool features. Um, there's polls, contests. You can directly talk and chat with a radio host. Um, it's really an interactive tool that I think it's going to benefit a lot of uh, radio DJs, but also audiences. It's going to get kids more involved, more engaged. Dan believes that Radio FX will move WEXP in the right direction and is confident that the student organization will be stronger than ever. For LTV News, I'm Callie Montana. I give Dan a lot of credit, you know, for keep trying to get WEXP back on their feet. That's not an easy job to do. Yeah, I know you're, you're an upperclassman, so you would know has the previously kind of died off and now come back? Yeah, so it definitely has died off. I remember my freshman year, you mm. know, trying to get involved with it, but it was a little bit hard. So it's great to see that Dan really cares and is passionate about this. Yeah, that's awesome. LaSalle has begun a new Explorer to Explorer mentor program designed to get first year students engaged with alumni. This program is designed to help out students during the start of their LaSalle experience. The pairs will be able to set their own long-term goals for the year, including inspiring other students to get involved within the LaSalle community, as well as give professional advice for their life after school. A variety of factors will go into matching each pair with a focus on their majors, minors, activities, and the student's location. Because there are no set guidelines for the interaction between the mentor and mentee, they can determine their own plan. Are you looking to be more involved on campus? Dave Roberts had the opportunity to learn more about the newly created organization, Her Campus LaSalle, with its co-president, Jessica Bryant. Check it out. So Jess, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Her Campus? Yeah, of course. So Her Campus is an organization. Um, it's an online magazine, kind of similar to like BuzzFeed or something like that. Um, obviously, given the name Her Campus, it's geared towards women. Um, they're all about empowering women, and so it's about um, making sure women have a safe place to like vent or like to read things that makes them relate to other people they like might not be having like the best day or like they need to like read about some issues that they're not willing to talk about stuff like that so altogether it's like supporting women making sure like everybody has a place to go so what made uh what made you guys want to bring it to LaSalle and uh, have it a part of our community we uh, me and Tyler the other co-president um believe that there needed to be like some more opportunities for comm majors especially to get experience especially with journalism mm -hmm. we also have a lot of um, opportunities to plan events for PR we have marketing and advertising and then we like run social media um, her campus can also lead to like internships and jobs afterwards and it's also great to have on a resume uh, so have you had any meetings yet? have you guys come together to uh try to get more people involved around campus? Absolutely, so far we've had the activities fair. It was a really great like chance to explain what we are all about to prospective you know, members. Um, we got a lot of signatures there, and then after that we had an information meeting, which, I mean, definitely more people than I thought <laughs> would show up did. Um, and it was really great to see how excited people were to join. Um, since then, our launch date is actually September, tomorrow, um, okay. the 12th. So uh, we're excited to see how the articles that we've already written impact that and then next week our new members will be able to publish their own articles. Okay, so I know it's called Her Campus, but uh, I mean there's a lot of allies there that, that are men. Mm -hmm. So how are they involved with uh, Her Campus? So it's definitely open to everybody. Um, so far I think most of who we have are women, but um, it's not only about women supporting women, it's kind of everybody supporting women. So if you believe in like equality, if you're like, you know, a feminist, so to say, um, then it's definitely for you. Okay, uh, are there other organizations like this on other campuses? Have you heard about it on, in like other Philly schools or is it just uh, some that's around here? So yeah, it's a national organization. There's one uh, at like Syracuse, there's one at Villanova, I believe, Temple, UPenn. There's a bunch of other like Philly schools that have their own branches of it. So it's like all over the place. Um, I know that you guys are, I mean, your launch date is September 12th. Uh, what do you, I mean, I know you're like new and fresh, but what do you kind of hope to see in the future and like moving forward? Moving forward, I definitely want to like get our message across. I want to, you know, kind of establish ourselves on campus. Obviously, because we are new, we don't have as great of a following as like some of the other, like the Collegian and LaSalle TV. 
Um, so that might be a little bit difficult for us, but we are definitely planning on having like a lot of events, a lot of fundraising, um, bringing awareness to like the different issues. Like this week is um, Suicide Prevention Week, so we're trying to bring attention to like those kind of issues. Anything that our members really feel strongly about and want to advocate for, we want to bring that to the table. Uh, I know that the communication department has a uh, AWC and. Uh, other and other organizations around there have a lot of female, a lot more organizations like female organizations like uh, like sorority. So like, are you gonna try to get involved with them over time? And like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a couple of members that are also part of AWC, and then two of our eboard members are part of um, sororities on campus. So we're definitely looking to like do something with other organizations on campus to help them out. They can help us out, and then we can all move towards the same goals. Uh, is there any way that the, anyone that's watching, they could reach you or like what uh, information they have? <laughs> uh, they can follow our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's all her campus at LaSalle. Um, you can send an email to HC LaSalle. Um, you can email me directly <laughs> um, or the other co-president, Tyler Moore. She would be, any of us would be more than willing to get you guys involved in any way. All right, well, thank you for telling us about her campus and I'm gonna send it back to the desk. You know, I think this is a really great organization to really empower women and really allow them to be confident and pursue their passions. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to go very far on this campus. Yeah. And I also think it's great that it's not only limited to females, like mm -hmm. males can get involved too. So I, I like that mix. But it's time for our first break. But when we come back, we'll tell you how an act of kindness went wrong. Stay tuned. Welcome back to LTV News. The couple that started a GoFundMe page for a homeless veteran less than a year ago is now being accused of using that money for their own personal benefits. Kate McClure raised almost $400,000 in donations for Johnny Bobbitt, who helped her get gas with his last $20. Bobbitt has come forward recently and claimed that McClure and her boyfriend have cut him off and will not give him the rest of his money. Bobbitt also claims that the couple has been on a large shopping spree and going on expensive vacations. Recently, investigators have seized many of the couple's items that may have been bought by Bobbitt's GoFundMe money, like a 2015 BMW and several Louis Vuitton bags. The couple will likely be indicted for the misuse of the money that they raised. That's just terrible. But former Philly Fire Chief and current LaSalle TV host Derek Sawyer may be leading Trenton's fire department in the near future. Trenton Mayor Reed Guscioro appointed Sawyer to be director of the city's fire department, calling him one of the best and the brightest. Guscioro is currently waiting for city council to approve Sawyer's appointment. When asked about the possibility of becoming Trenton's fire director, Sawyer said, quote, I began my public service at the age of 17 when I enlisted in the United States Air Force. As a lifelong public servant, I look forward to the opportunity to serve the citizens of Trenton and the men and women of the Trenton Fire Department, end quote. Sawyer served as the Philadelphia's fire chief from 2014 to 2016. He first joined the department in 1985 and is a longtime advocate for fire safety. On September 5th, Bud Light unveiled a statue to the Eagles to commemorate the iconic Philly Special, the play that led to the Eagles' victory in Super Bowl 52. The bronze statue, created by Utah-based artist Raymond Gibby, took four months to create and stands over nine feet tall. It depicts the conversation held between Nick Foles and Doug Peterson, where Foles asked, You want Philly Philly? A line now engraved at the bottom of the statue. The newly revealed statue is said to remain outside of Lincoln Financial Field for at least the rest of this season, but there is the possibility of it becoming a permanent fixture. Campus Philly welcomed back college students to the city of brotherly love with their new popular event, College Fest. The goal is to get students who would usually spend a lot of their time within like the college campus bubble and they don't want to leave, it's hard to get out. Um, the main goal is to get those students out of campus um, onto like the city ground. Extravaganza gave students the chance to meet new people from different schools, play some games, get free giveaways from vendors, and most importantly, explore the beautiful city that we call Philadelphia. There's so many colleges here, so it's really nice to see like 
there are people from the University of the Sciences, which is right next to my school, who have like never seen before. Philly's so cool, especially to go to college in, because it's so different than like a little suburban campus. Like we're surrounded by so many other people and kids our age. Coming up after this break, we'll tell you why Nike sales are up by 31 percent. On Tuesday, September 4th, the Senate Judiciary Committee began their first hearing on Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh was selected by President Trump back in the beginning of July. The hearings are a chance for senators to ask Kavanaugh questions regarding his qualifications and his stance on some of the biggest cases. The Senate is slated to vote on Kavanaugh's confirmation on September 20th. Nike has raised a controversial storm with their 30th anniversary Just Do It campaign. The popular brand has chosen Colin Kaepernick, an ex-San Francisco 49ers quarterback, to be one of the faces of the campaign. Kaepernick became widely known for kneeling during the national anthem in the beginning of his football games and protest of police brutality back in 2016. The quarterback is currently in an ongoing lawsuit with the National Football League after filing a collusion grievance accusing the league of organizing an effort to keep him off of a roster due to the protests. Kaepernick has been under contract with Nike since 2011. However, he is now being brought back into the spotlight with the 30th anniversary campaign. One of the ads includes a close-up of Kaepernick's eyes with the quote, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. The release of this campaign has caused an outpour of supporters and non-supporters of Kaepernick. Now listen to this. Students of School District 27J in Denver, Colorado will be able to enjoy their weekends for just a little while longer this school year. Beginning in August, the school district transitioned from a five-day to a four-day school week, eliminating school on Mondays from the calendar. The school district says that this change in scheduling is saving money on busing, substitute teachers, and utilities. At the same time, the hope is that the new school week structure will allow for increased teacher prep and development time, as well as increased instructional time for students in the classroom. Denver's new four-day week is following an emerging educational trend. Estimations say that around 560 districts in 25 states are making the move to a four-day week. I, no, I, I'm sorry. I know they're trying to, like, save money and everything, but, you know, I don't, you can't do that. No, we'll have to see. <laughs> Stay tuned. We have more news ahead. Well, welcome back. So it's time now that we introduce a new segment. I thought it would be good to spice things up a little. At the end of our so, show. Yeah, so it's called hashtag what's trending. All right, let's get ready for it. So Eagles fans will love this one. Let's quickly take a look down memory lane to Super Bowl 52 when the Eagles beat the Patriots 41 to 33. Now it gets even better because Dan Minkle, a Dunkin Donuts customer in Massachusetts, was horrified when he received his iced coffee in a cup with the Eagles logo and the saying, World Champions. Minkle quickly posted the picture to social media, and before he knew it, his post went viral. Dunkin Donuts eventually came out with a statement saying, quote, we appreciate our loyal customers for bringing this to our attention, and we are taking steps to ensure all of our local stores and are stocked with the correct cups, end quote. Now, you might think it couldn't get any better than that, but you're wrong. Tyler Weston works at a Costco in Concordville, Pennsylvania. Weston was going through a new shipment of Eagles hats and realized that the embroidering on the brim of the hat said Houston Texans instead of Philadelphia Eagles. 
Weston took to social media and it did not take long until the Texans saw the tweet and decided to take advantage of the situation. The Texans had some fun and tweeted hashtag fly Texans fly. The Eagles then decided to get back at them and tweeted hashtag we are Eagles. I really like, you know, the tweeting. I mean, I wouldn't call it a war, but, you know, going back and forth yeah. on Twitter, they were creative. It's all a good fun. It I, shows yeah, not taking I, it too I seriously. I like the, how the Texans, you know, had a little fun with that. Yeah. Eagles went right back at them. But I, I think we have to talk about the coffee cup now. Yeah, I'm not Because I, I would be mad if, all right, I'm a huge Yankee fan. So if I went into Duncan, you know, years ago when the Mets won the World Series, and if I got a cup with the Mets on it, not cool. I mean, well, and the Yankees won the World Series, I should say. I would be pissed. <laughs> we'll take a look at this picture. This is Wally Richardson, but students at Marina Village Middle School in California know him as Mr. Knuckles. Wally has been standing outside the same school for the past 10 years, greeting kids with his signature fist pumps and wise words about life and being kind. Wally is a 94-year-old veteran, World War II veteran and hopes that his little act of kindness will remind the kids to always be nice to others. That's really That's sweet. That's super sweet. That's really adorable. You know, I was scrolling through social media, uh -huh. and this is how I found it, mm -hmm. and a lot of the parents were just saying that he's been there for over 10 years and that, you know, kids who are in college now remember him and actually went back to see yeah. him. No, so, I could see how like that would really make a difference in someone's day and that really could have effects like down the road. I think that's amazing. And, and the fact he's 94 years old and still doing it, amazing. Amazing. Well, that just about does it for this episode, but be sure to find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook page. We love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. If you missed the scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on YouTube on our LaSalle TV Philly page. Until next time, for Dave, Nick, and the entire crew, I'm Callie Montana. Thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops.